Hi, my name is Chad Bettis, and I'm the author of The Disciple Making Parent. And this is my audio blog, where I read some of my blog posts in audio format for your convenience. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be thinking about the problem of suffering. And the title of the blog post is A Short Answer to the Objection of Suffering in the World. You know, the problem of evil and suffering is often a reason that people give for dismissing the existence of God. Our children will run into this question, and they'll probably have this question themselves. You might even have it. Let me read a question that I received and then tell you my answer. The question was this. I was talking to a friend at school about God, and she responded that a God who is all-powerful and good couldn't exist because of the evil in the world. She says that hurricanes and earthquakes prove that God doesn't exist. I didn't know what to say to this. What do you think? Well, Sarah, thanks so much for writing me. This is a common objection to Christianity, and it's been around for many years. One point to ask your friend is this. Is there any real suffering behind this question for her? Often, the issue is not so much philosophical, but personal. Your friend may have gone through a time of pain, like losing a good friend in a car wreck or a family divorce, and God did not seem to answer her prayer. The pain can push a person to this conclusion. Most objections to Christianity are moral, not mental. Well, the first thing, though, we need to realize is that suffering is a problem for any view of the world. Before giving the Christian view, we need to see how inadequate the other views are, and we need to ask her, why does she say they're suffering? For example, the naturalistic view says there's no reason for suffering since we are all evolving upwards. Death and destruction are just a part of life. Is that what she would say? Or the Hindu view says that suffering is because of bad karma. Maybe it was the person suffering, or maybe somebody else, but it's caused by us. The Buddhist view says that it's an illusion. And none of these last three views hold up to the pain she may have experienced. What are we going to tell the person who has just lost an infant? Are we going to say to them, well, it's some genetic defect and that's too bad because we're evolving upwards. There really is no purpose to the suffering. Or are we going to say you or that baby must have done something wrong in this life or a past life? Or are we going to tell them, tell this couple, no, it's just an illusion. Can you see how none of these answers hold up to the pain that we experience when we experience suffering? Really, what this person is repeating is the form of the syllogism that was articulated by the philosopher David Hume in the 18th century. If God is all-powerful, he can stop suffering. If God is all-loving, he would stop suffering. Suffering and evil exist, and then comes this philosophical conclusion. Therefore, God is not all-powerful, he's not all-loving, or he does not exist at all. She, your friend, and many people have chosen that final option. The problem with that logic is that there could be another reason for the suffering that we don't know. If there's a great God that we know only in part, then it is at least possible. Then there are reasons that we don't know about. It's similar to a parent holding a child while a doctor gives a painful injection. The child may look at the parent and think, you don't love me. But the purposes of the pain are beyond the understanding of the child. Interestingly, when God is asked about suffering in the Bible, he doesn't explain himself. There are plenty of secondary causes of suffering like Adam's sin, the evilness of our own heart, and even demonic forces. But when Job asked the Lord about his suffering, the Lord responded by asking Job, were you there when I laid the foundations of the world? That's found in chapter 38, verse 4. Jesus, when asked a similar question, did not answer, but instead called on his hearers to repent. That's found in Luke 13, 4. God seems to imply that the why question is above our understanding. The more important question is the what question. 
what does the Lord want me to do in this situation? Although I believe Christians have the best answer to the question of evil and suffering, the proof of God's existence does not rest on this answer. Instead, it rests on the person of Jesus, his life, his miracles, his death, and his resurrection. The resurrection proves that God exists, and Jesus was who he said he was, and the cross proves that he cares. Ultimately, that is probably what your friend cares about. Does God care about our suffering? Does God care about my suffering? And the answer to that is a profound yes. We see this in the cross where God the Son became a person, entered into our world, and suffered the most cruel death on the cross. He knows what our suffering is. So though we may not know why he allows suffering, we know what it is not. It is not because he doesn't care. Thanks for listening to the Disciple Making Parent audio blog. This post is an expansion of the material found in my book, The Disciple Making Parent. In fact, in the book, I have a whole chapter arguing that we need to teach our children, especially our teens, apologetics. It's the premier book on family discipleship, and it's been endorsed by uh, leaders like Al Mohler and Tim Challies. You can find more information at thedisciplemakingparent.com and check out our free audiobook while you're there. Visit thedisciplemakingparent.com forward slash free audiobook. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.